What's up everyone? Trying to live stream here. This is the first time we're doing this, so this is a, a test. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a live stream here over the severe weather here in Oklahoma. So let me uh, get this up here. And we got tornado warnings. How about this? Uh, comment one if you can see this. Got to see if this is working here. All right, so it looks like it's working now. We got a uh, tornado warning out here in Guthrie, that, and this is uh, looking pretty impressive. This storm is about to hit Guthrie uh, in uh, Texas. Now, we'll just uh, take a zoomed out view real quick. There's uh, plenty of severe warnings all the way up in Oklahoma, but the threat for tornadoes up in Oklahoma is starting to lower just because of the wind threat that's increasing. And uh, so we'll uh, focus on this Texas panhandle area. And these are uh, some pretty good looking cells down here. And uh, here is pretty cool. And uh, we'll uh, turn on the this thing right here. And you can see 63, 67 miles an hour, as much as maybe 70, 80, not, yeah, 80 miles an hour right there near that couplet. Now this is does not actually look tornadic at the moment. See how this uh, circulation here is really broad. You got lots of uh, wind going this way out here, lots of wind in this area going out here. For a tornado, you want it almost like that. You want it a little bit uh, tighter. So this looks more, more like a rear flank downdraft. What will happen is you'll get downdrafts on the back side of the storm, goes up the updraft and down, and it, it'll you know kind of uh, slide out. And so you got a little cold front here from the storm, outflow boundary, uh, right along the storm's edge. And uh, that's mostly what it's looking like, but tons of lightning. Look at all that lightning. One every uh, couple blocks, really. And uh, so that's looking like mostly a hail and wind threat at the moment. You can actually see the hail size here. Tornado warning expires 38 minutes. Check that out. The hail size looks like, uh, I probably guess, uh, golf balls here. But mostly they're just talking about the tornado threat. We've got another app. We can check this app. This is called Radar little larger than golf ball there. The storms up in Oklahoma look mostly linear. You see when you get that it, it's harder to produce tornadoes because with tornadoes you want a supercell. Can you imagine that's a terrible drawing there but you got inflow on one side outflow on the other you can get rotation but when it's messy like that it just disrupts the rhythm. So the tornado threat's really a lot lower up here in uh, Oklahoma than was uh it was earlier. There was a couple strong tornadoes that chasers got out here. In fact, we'll turn on the chasers real quick and uh, see how things are going here. We'll uh, turn on the last 15 minutes. And there is chasers all over the place. Look at that. Hundreds, thousands. So, yeah, earlier in the day there was just bumper to bumper traffic for about three miles. Now, let's see, is breaking up? Is that what people are saying? Now it looks like, looks like there's one person that said that. So, if you can hear me, just uh, just type a one in the comments, and if it, if everything's smooth here and everything's going good, this is a uh, first time doing this live stream, so it's gonna be a little rough the first time around here. But I plan to get some interviews on, you know, some chasers, uh, some split panels and stuff like that in the future. But right now we're just testing this out, a little bit easier to use. Um, and then we'll uh, turn on that radar. We'll turn on that radar a little bit further south. Now this looks a little more impressive for tornadoes. When you get lines like this on the southern end of the line, usually the southern end storm has a lot of tornado potential because it's going to be a little more supercellular. There's uh, less forcing. There's a stronger cap down there. Now we'll uh, zoom in, see how the tornado threat looks, and see this looks a little more impressive kind of work to do but we'll play this uh, real quick areas near uh four sand maybe that's uh, where you're going to want to watch actually has this moving up northeast right here so no doesn't look like it's going to hit any big cities which is good probably say south of Cahoma and north of four sand but uh for the most part looks mostly outflow dominant but right now the latest frame looks a little more impressive here got some inflow there in that notch there could be a developing tornado eventually there and uh, for the most part looks a little bit too broad though 
got some more storms to the south. What will happen is you'll get these storms that feed into these supercells and they'll keep develop back building to the south. And I think that's what's going on. But right now there's just a little bit too many storms going on for a, a really high tornado potential. But there were tornadoes earlier. Now what I'm going to do is go into the Oklahoma area and see what's going on near Oklahoma City. Cancels, uh, or school was canceled out here in Oklahoma City today. And uh, luckily, looks like they're uh, lucking out here. There's an outflow boundary right here from these storms. Usually when you get that, the tornado threat is dramatically lower because all of this area behind this outflow boundary is just a bunch of cold air. If you imagine this as your boundary, here's your outflow boundary, the leading edge. This is height, okay, so we're going higher up in the atmosphere. The farther back you get, the further north, and this is north right here, the higher up the uh, storm towers are going to be because it's, it's colder air. The cold air is going to sink. And so that elevates the bases. It undercuts the storms. And uh, tornadoes just aren't as uh, likely to develop when you have higher bases like that. So Tulsa, Oklahoma City, I'd say the threat is extremely low for tornadoes now. Uh, still a bit of a tornado threat down here in southwest Oklahoma. But uh, the main show is probably going to be back here in Texas with those isolated supercells. And if, I, if you remember right, I said yesterday that it could be a boom or a bust. And it might be a, a bust in a, the northwest part of Oklahoma because of the messy storm mode. But farther south where the cap's a little bit stronger, a little bit less crazy on the forcing, uh, that would help out for tornadoes in that area. But let's look at this uh, real quick. This is a significant tornado parameter. We'll uh, reload this. This is called... Uh, Sat Squatch by WX Byte. It's like a few bucks a month. You can actually download this to your uh, phone app, your Android, whatever. And uh, you can see the radar and satellite. Actually, they don't have radar, but they do have satellite. And then you can turn on some different things. We got, how about we turn on the violent tornado parameter? So that's uh, the potential for violent tornadoes. Now, what you'll see is this is really elevated, but I don't think that's going to be the case. You can see a uh, it's in the 30s and 40s. I mean, that's off the charts. But again, that storm mode is going to prevent, you know, that's those storms to the north and that outflow boundary is going to prevent really uh, tornadoes from developing. This doesn't take into account the current storm mode. So that's really overdone. But let's go significant tornado parameter. Again, blown out. But there could be some tornadoes still out in this region right here. What you can get is you can get a line and then sometimes you can get notches within that line and brief spin-ups. But like I said, the strong tornado threat is low. If you do get a tornado, it would be a brief spin-up in that region. Now, we'll go farther south here. Oops. Get rid of that. Go farther south, and uh, we'll look at these storms down in Texas. This scale goes from a 1 to a 10. Okay, so 10 is going to be your highest. 1 is going to be your lowest, actually 0 0.5 or so. But one is the, the minimum requirement typically for tornadoes. Uh, again, this is just a parameter. It's, you know, not everything. But you can see generally about two to six in that region, seven or eight down there. So it's definitely moderate potential for tornadoes down there in that region. All right, so we'll delete that out real quick. I think I'm only going to do this for a few more minutes. This is mostly just a test for future outbreaks, uh, you know, pretty busy uh, for the rest of the night here so probably wrap it up soon we'll look at a couple other things and uh, click the layers here supercell composite pretty freaking high to be honest here but again once those storm modes go upscale the the threat usually diminishes pretty quickly so I'd say that's uh, pretty low after that uh, so let's look at helicity this is going to be your spin in the atmosphere. Now, what happened is, get that pen tool back. You had a lot of shear. The uh, the storms kind of developed from northeast to southeast. And it was right along the shear. So the shear vectors weren't really, uh, they are were really parallel to the storms. And so it kind of helped the storms grow upscale into a, a complex, which lowered the tornado potential substantially. But there is lots of helicity in this region right here, which could support tornadoes. Let's go back to the radar real quick. Go back to this Radar Omega. It's a, a brand new tool I'm using. We'll look at that Guthrie storm again. A few chasers over here. 
moving up the highway into that storm right there, probably going to want to go this way, um, or you're going to get stuck behind it. But looks like a pretty strong RFD. You can tra uh, change the storm mode here real quick. Um, map types. Which I'm not really sure how to do that one and that one. We'll just go back to this one. And uh, go out down to Guthrie, Oklahoma. And there it is. Looking pretty impressive still. Here's another storm that's blowing up down to the southeast. This is near, going towards Jayton, actually. It's looking like a right towards Jayton, maybe just a little bit north. And we'll see if there's any circulation. Circulation's pretty weak. Winds are probably 20, 30, 40 miles an hour. You can turn on that uh, tool right there. It's about 16, 20. And then uh, away, f uh, away from the radar, about 13, 15. So weak circulation, but if that tightens up right there, there's probably a nice mesocyclone there. All it takes is just a few minutes, and that thing is uh, it could be trouble. Because this environment, just to add ahead of it, you got 70 dews, uh, some areas closer to 80, plenty of instability, the wind shear is there. So really at any time, these things could go bonkers. All right, so that northern storm near Guthrie, the circulation has tightened up a little bit. You can see that, that that's the inflow going into the storm, outflow going out. And uh, we'll look at the, oh, oh there's 82 mile an hour report. So really strong winds blowing out of the, most of the stuff's going to be just north of there. Inflow's kind of weak, so there's mostly outflow dominant. You'd like a little bit more of an opening here in this notch and much more green. All of this stuff out here kind of getting ingested into it sometimes it's starting to look a little more linear so we'll look we'll put this on a uh, loop here and you can kind of see stuff is kind of merging together especially in this area it's really going to start lowering the tornado potential or just southwest of Jayton just isn't quite wrapping around enough and, uh, we'll wrap it up again I'm just testing this out and uh, if you have any ideas comments uh, just uh, Put them in the chat box, and uh, we'll uh, use this for future live streams. Again, think about getting some other chasers on here, maybe some live streams of uh, tornadoes, of chasers chasing, stuff like that. And so we'll look at this storm real quick. Uh, let's see. Go down here. Still pretty broad, but your tornado is going to be in there. Probably some interesting-looking structure in there. You can see this right here is kind of your warm front, essentially, of your storm. Your cold front's going to be out here. So you got inflow zipping in there, outflow zipping out there. And uh, you got that flying eagle look. So this is a very powerful supercell. Now, if you're like over here in this area, well, not under the rain, but you might see those mammatus clouds. Okay, those are those bubbles that you see in the atmosphere, uh, like that kind of sink out from under the storm. So you got some really, really pretty good mammatus clouds out there and then up here as well. If you're uh, living in, you know, Colorado City, Snyder. Yeah, and then uh, what I think you would see is maybe some tornado threat develop here, south of Midland. What's going to happen is this: all this stuff to the north is going to keep merging together, I think. And uh, you might start to get more development back out, out there as, this, uh, as these storms move into this powder keg environment to the east. I think we got a new update here. That's looking a little more impressive. Look at that hook right there. Kind of a nasty looking hook. But the, the velocity couplets are nothing too crazy on that right there. Let's look at the hail real quick. And uh, that's uh, hail size, estimation, four inches. Good Lord. That, you know, that was a few minutes ago, but probably some pretty crazy hail going out towards Cahoma, just northeast of Big Spring, heading out towards West Golf Balls, all sorts of things. So... Get the heck inside if you're in that area. You know, I was out chasing once, and I saw a guy in a motorcycle going into one of these things. And I, I, I just, I don't know if he made it or what, but it's definitely had four-inch hail. So if you're on the highway, just get into a gas station or something. All right, so we're going to look at, change uh, radar modes here, and uh, we'll look at the VIL. This is called uh, Vertically Integrated Liquid, and it can kind of show you your hail potential. Yep. So right here is going to be maxed out. It's about 80 kilograms per meter squared. And so what it essentially means is your largest hail is going to be in that 
colored region, the white, okay, the reds and whites, going to be really strong, large pockets of hail. And so that's really that cone is moving towards this area right here along that highway. We'll play it in animation real quick. Cahoma, Westbrook, Colorado City, that area under the gun for some pretty large hail along that in, uh, the interstate. Now to the south, you see more, lots more hail and uh, more developing out here. This is going to be the newest threat for tornadoes, I believe, here soon. Did that just go tornado? No, but it will soon, I think. Now we'll go back to Oklahoma and uh, we'll look at the hail and wind threat real quick there, and then we'll probably wrap it up. Again, this is just a test live stream. Uh, so this is brand new. We're going to test this out real quick, and then we'll turn the radars. All right, so the hail threat up here, usually when you get complexes of storms like this, the hail threat's a little bit lower. Again, supercells usually have the strongest updrafts, strongest low-level uh, uh, mechanisms for hail that will keep the hail growing. So it's a little bit lower out in Oklahoma. Uh, so probably just uh, nickels, maybe a couple golf balls in uh, near the Stillwater area right now. Click that, 1.25 inch, probably more like golf balls. Sometimes the radar will overestimate these things. And then the wind threat looks like mostly a wind threat right now. You know, mile an hour winds there. Kind of got a backside wind threat near Weather Fordell, uh, Clinton, Elk City, west of, or east of Elk City, Magnum, Oklahoma. And uh, yeah, Magnum, Oklahoma got a pretty big tornado earlier. So if you see, uh, uh, go to YouTube uh, on uh, and search in the Magnum tornado. I believe that's Oklahoma, right? Yeah, anyway, there are plenty of videos online of that tornado, pretty crazy tornado. So. I think I'm just going to wrap it up here. Again, the threat for uh, Oklahoma is starting to lower for tornadoes. It's mostly going to be a wind and hail threat, mostly wind, I would say, at this point. And this stuff's going to move east uh, through the overnight hours, start to really weaken after about, oh, that area right there, it's going to start to weaken after about 9 o'clock or so, 10 o'clock p.m., but mostly just a, a, a hail threat, wind threat. Down here, it's going to be still hail and wind and uh, tornadoes as well. So the tornado threat's gonna be the highest where you get your isolated supercells down here out in Texas, where you see these things are isolated. So that's where the highest tornado threat is gonna be for the rest of the night. And uh, areas in Kansas and Missouri, you're gonna to be too far north of that warm front. Okay, the warm front is gonna be uh, probably somewhere in this region right here, or the, the now it's the outflow boundary from the storm. So anything north of that line Really, the interstate, north of the interstate, uh, the threat has lowered significantly. Get rid of that thing. And so I think we'll wrap it up here. Again, if you like this video, uh, hit the thumbs up button. Put your uh, suggestions and comments in the chat. It's just a practice live stream. We're going to probably do some more of these in the future. So stay safe, everyone. Have a good day, and we'll see you soon.